so we are in the exhibition room of class 10 and they are presenting the science extravaganza exhibition so we have a model over here i would request the students to speak on it hello good morning our model is about actually uh, efficiency of fan blades which shows how um, our customers can uh, buy affordable and clean energy we have also three different types of blades difference of uh, energy and difference of rpm per motor so we can also share about the different types of material used in the blades such as metal plastic and composite fan uh, so our project is about uh, checking how much uh, efficiency that the fan can provide. We want to make sure that the fan is affordable in clean energy but at the same time gives the efficient output. We have used a 12 volt DC motor so that the power is stable over all the three fans and we have tested the different shapes and different blade angles and found out which of these is the most efficient one. Here we have also found out about the different blade angles and how it helps the fans to function. Here we have, uh, after many experiments, we have seen that the ang uh, angle of 12 to 15 degrees is the most efficient for fan blades. Here we have also experimented with the effects of number of fan blades and the influence of fan blades on fan efficiency. This shows how an ignored and important topic has been missing from our lives. This matters and it helps in our conservation of energy. Now let us see how it works. So first, we have an anemometer which calculates the speed of the wind in RPM and then translates into meter per second. Now we can see how the motor works. As we can see, it is a 550 DC 12 volt motor. Here we can see the wind speed in the anemometer. As we can see, the wind speed is 7.2 meter per second. Now we have a 3 tin fan blade. As we can see, it has an impressive speed of 5 meter per second speed. Next, we have a 2 blades. As you can see, it has a, a speed of only 2 meter per second, but it uses very less energy. Now we have a model made by the students of class 10B. It, it is on the emergency light circuit. I would like the students to explain it. Good morning, everyone. So the project we are uh, discussing about today is emergency light circuit. So uh, the main objective of this model is to provide electricity to the financially unstable people who cannot afford inverters since they are very costly nowadays. It is a very cost efficient model and it works within uh, about 4000 rupees, not beyond that. So first of all, coming to the main modules, it is the charging unit, it is the auto charging on off or turn off um, emergency light and the step up module. So first of all, we are going to discuss about this uh, charging unit. So the AC power supply has been provided to the battery and it is being charged. And the red light here indicates that the battery is being charged. But keeping the safety and longevity of the battery in concern, we have uh, attached a DC relay with it, with, uh, which cuts off the uh, power supply once it gets fully charged. Its highest index is 12.9 volt and not beyond that or else it will get overcharged and might get burnt. But this emergency light will not glow since the AC power supply is being provided. But once the AC power supply goes off, our emergency light is, uh, will glow. And this is a DC light which is not being used nowadays. So we have stepped it up to another uh, level that is uh, AC bulbs which are used nowadays uh, in most of our homes. So the AC, uh, uh, this AC circuit is being provided uh, electricity by this battery. And we have stepped it up using an ATX transformer, two supercapacitors and two MOSFETs which convert the TF. First of all, they convert 12 volt DC pulse to 12 volt AC pulse. And then the ATX transformer converts uh, 12 volt AC pulse to 220 volt half wave AC. And the two supercapacitors convert it into full wave AC and provide the adequate amount of voltage required for the AC bulb to glow. So first of all, this is the um, output we have got after stepping it up and we hope that this helps the people who cannot afford for inverters and the main key features will be explained by him. Now I would like to explain the key features. We have not used integrated circuits available in the market. We have not used pre-assembled circuit boards. We have used zero PCBs as you can see here. We have used zero PCBs and designed the circuit manually using separate components. This kind of model is done for the first time at the school level since we are generating 220 volt very high working voltage using the world's smallest 12 volt lead acid battery with zero, zero delay time in switching. 
So the futuristic exposure of this model is to commercialize it to a level so that it can help the uh, so that it can reach the wider public and uh, it benefits them. And that's all. Thank you. So now we have a model made by the students of class 10A. This is the chemistry version of toxicity in energy drinks. I would like the students to explain it. Greetings everyone. We warmly welcome you to class 10th A's project based on SDG goal 3, good health and well-being and the topic is toxicity in energy drinks. First of all, I want you all to meet our highlight, Barry. He is our educational and interactive chatbot which is inspired by the topic of the project. I would like to call my friend to explain its workings. So, now that you have learned about Barry, let's ask him something about energy drinks. Mainly, Barry is a language model that practically answers any questions given to him. Wake up. How does excessive caffeine intake from energy drinks affect the cardiovascular system? Excessive caffeine intake from energy drinks can have several adverse effects on the cardiovascular system. 1. Increased heart rate and blood pressure asterisk asterisk. Asterisk caffeine acts as a stimulant increasing the release of adrenaline, epinephrine, and noradrenaline, norepinephrine, which can lead to an elevation in heart rate and blood pressure. Asterisk high levels of caffeine can also cause arrhythmias, such as tachycardia, rapid heartbeat, or palpitations. 2. Vasoconstriction asterisk asterisk. Asterisk caffeine causes vasoconstriction, which is the narrowing of blood vessels. Asterisk this can lead to decreased blood flow to the heart and other organs, increasing the risk of cardiovascular events. 3. Dehydration asterisk asterisk. Asterisk energy drinks often contain high amounts of sugar, which can lead to dehydration. Asterisk dehydration can increase blood viscosity, making it harder for the heart to pump blood effectively. 4. Artery stiffness asterisk asterisk. Asterisk chronic caffeine consumption has been linked to increased arterial stiffness. Asterisk stiffer arteries are less elastic, which can impair blood flow and increase the risk of cardiovascular disease. Now, since you have seen the working of Barry, let's come to the next topic, liquescence. So, we have made a model basically to test the pH level and conductivity level of energy drinks. The pH sensor which we are using here will help to determine the acidity or alkalinity of the model and the conductivity sensor will help to show the presence of electrolytes or other electroconductive substances in the energy drink. Now, if you would mind coming close to the screen here, Once we have dipped the pH sensor in the energy drink, it shows a pH of 3.61, which is more than the appropriate value set by the FDA, which is 2.5 to 3. Now, if we check for the conductivity sensor, yeah, we get a value of 139, which is again more than the set value by the FDA. Therefore, we consider this drink unhealthy for the human body. Now we have a mathematical model made by the students of class 10D and this model is based on the toxicity of energy drinks. I would like the students to explain it. So good morning. So today we are presenting a mathematical model on the toxicity of energy drinks. So <clears throat> energy drinks, are, we consume energy drinks daily but we actually do not know the toxicity. So with this model we will show the demographics of the age composition and the consumption of the toxic, toxic uh, energy drinks, we have taken four examples, Red Bull, Gatorade, Sting and a Monster. Talking about the model, Navneet will explain. Now I shall take you through the functioning of our model. We created this model based on the statistical analysis of energy drinks. Firstly, we have an estimated drink consumption over the last decade. So as we can see, it's on an increasing trend which means that people are deviating from carbonated drinks towards energy drinks. Next up we have energy drink consumption by various age groups. So here we can see that children and adolescents consume a lot more energy drinks than the other groups. And here we have the proportion of people, those who are actually healthy and avoid energy drinks. So here we can see that uh, people between 26 to 35 year olds tend to avoid a lot of a lot more energy drinks than the other groups. 
Next up, we have the recommended caffeine consumption versus the actual caffeine consumption by these various age groups. So here we can see that children under 12 years old and adolescents of 12 to 17 year old consume a lot more caffeine than their body can actually handle. But as they grow up, the capacity goes up. But even though their consumption goes up, because of their capacity, they can handle this caffeine they're consuming. Lastly, we have the estimated sales of energy drinks over the last decade for these major brands. So here we can see that Red Bulls tends to sell the highest amount as they spend a lot more in marketing and sponsorship. So that was all about our model. Thank you. So now we have the students of class 10C displaying a project on determining whether ethanol burns clearly than gasoline. So I would like the students to explain it. So our project is where to check whether the ethanol burns more clearly than gasoline. So for that, we first executed it through a lab experiment, as you can see here. This is our video for this. For this, we use different biofuels such as ethanol and methanol, different fossil fuels such as kerosene, diesel and gasoline, which is commonly also known as petrol. After doing this experiment, we observed that ethanol produces less smoke and burns and produces less harmful chemicals than if you compare it with other petrol, which is our gasoline. So after this, we have our model which is an exact replica of our setup as you saw in our lab experiment. This works uh, with a humidifier inside it. So the humidifier absorbs the water from the syringe and to show the fire, fire effect, we use the humidifier and we used yellow LED lights to show the fire effect. Now we move on to the next topic, which is biofuels and fossil fuels. Following our topic, here is some information about biofuels and fossil fuels. Biofuels are derived from biomass, which includes plants and animal products. They are basically man-made and they are good for the environment as they are renewable and they are free from harmful substances. Here comes the fossil fuels, which are from uh, the prehistoric organisms and they are used for electricity, transportation and in industries. Now I'm coming if the biofuels have any potential to be in, become an alternative. As we can see from the previous topic, the biofuels contribute heavily to the SDG 13 and our government is intensively uh, contributing and investing in this area or field. In 2018, a policy was released where ethanol was blended with petrol and diesel to make it more greener and efficient. So we can say that the biofuel is a very good alternative to fossil fuels and will provide a greener and safer future for us. Thank you. So now we have Munmun Ma'am with us, who is the HOD of Science and in charge of ATL Lab. Uh, good morning. It's absolutely awesome being part of this ex uh, beautiful extravaganza. So the class 10s, all the 10s, A, B, C, D has put up a wonderful show. Also in the ATL lab, we have a wonderful show. They have worked for since uh, during the summer months and they have come out with all these beautiful projects that you see and they have made us proud. Thank you, children, each and every one of you. All. I would like to thank you all and the mentors. Thank you so much.